This is our, our look at the top 10 things that make the 21 Delta really the pinnacle of, of 21 foot pilot house boats. My name is Jonathan Lawrence and I'm here with Raider Boats. Let's jump right into number one. Number one is bow shear. Uh, bow shear is a gradual rise in the bow that goes from a level plane to an increase in the front. And so uh, by doing that, there's a couple, there's a, well, most manufacturers are gonna run straight sides. It's a very easy way to design. It's gonna be a flat plane. Things fit up really well. Uh, the fabrication is really easy. But uh, as some of the guys like to make a comment, we put the cuss in custom. So uh, with these bows, when you're adding bow shear, you actually have to pull the sides of the boat out further and you separate it more. And so we, we have a fixture, we pull it out, we lock it into place. And by doing that, when you pull it wider, it's gonna bring that nose in tighter. The only way it brings the nose in tighter is by bringing that nose up. Then we're gonna press up from the very front of the boat and really roll that forward. Then we start fabricating these pieces to fit perfectly, weld them out, and really creates that bow shear. But this bow shear, you can see this is a level plane back here. And this is where I start to rise. You can kind of get a figure of my, on my shoulder here. As it climbs up, this is a 21 foot boat. But as I start climbing up on this boat, you can see this bow is getting taller and taller. This boat's not really sitting proud. It's, it's sitting fairly level here. But now it's gonna kiss me in the cheek. This added bow rise that you're getting your bow shear out of it is, is gonna protect you. As you got swells in the ocean, and, and let's say you get caught in rough water, you're gonna have to slow down. Uh, you can't always run 50 miles an hour. And so there's times where I've been in the ocean running offshore in really big water that I gotta drop down to nine, 10, 11 knots because it's just dangerous to run faster. It's not about ride quality being better. It's not about the, the boat cutting faster. It's the fact that you are in a gigantic body of water, lose the ego, lose the macho side, slow down take it easy, be safe. What you're gonna find in most boats is that when you slow down, your nose is gonna to wanna to sink down and it's gonna drop down. When you're on plane, you got throttle, you got manipulation off your engine trim to really raise that bow up. But when you gotta slow down to low speeds, you're gonna see a lot of boats that dip down. Our hull and how we carry the V further forward and how we have more shoulders in it is all a product of our offshore bracket. I'll get to that in a little bit, but that gives us maximum bow uh, buoyancy in the front, which gives us lift in the bow. So our boat's not gonna dip down a whole lot. It's gonna stay very flat and level, but even then we still raise that nose up, give you as much bow shear, which is where, which is a, a saltwater, big water design. And it's very common in, in, in more custom builders. It's not common in any production scale. Uh, we are the only production manufacturer that builds in volume that is doing this. And that's very unique to the Raider boat. Uh, and it's gonna give you added protection in big water. This 21 footer, uh, you know, you might be kokanee fishing on Lake Merwin. Uh, you might be out at Stampede, or you might run Albacore. Uh, this boat has been tested by me offshore. We have ran it in all various uh, water conditions, and it performs amazingly. We're really proud of this product, and one of the unique things is bow shear. Same as what we have on the Pro Fish, same design that we're running all the way through our Sea Raider series, uh, and that a lot of charter boats are very proud of having on their boats too. Uh, day in and day out use in rough water, this is gonna be a big differenti differentiator for you. So now we're gonna go on to number two. Okay. Number two is anodized railing. Uh, watch a lot of these videos. So, so if you're on YouTube, I'm sure they're gonna get posted. Uh, if you scan the QR code and you're watching this on your phone or to show, uh, wherever you're watching this, look for other videos for all the other models and you're gonna see a lot of the repetitive things because what we do on this 21 foot boat is the same thing that we do on our 30 foot boat. That's not to say we're chintzing out on our 30 foot boat. That's saying that we are really putting extremely high quality materials and product in this boat we are really presenting to you a 21 foot pilot house that's unmatched in the market. This thing is a Sherman tank of boats and we're super proud of it. One of the big factors for us is we wanted to build you a boat that is not only super strong and robust and it's gonna last you a really, really long time with zero potential for fatigue uh, and give you the best ownership and, and enjoyment building adventures on the water. And the second thing is building you a boat that's gonna last finish wise. And so the paint we use, uh, the well that we do, all this stuff is gonna really bowed and an aid to a boat that's gonna last you uh, finish-wise as long as possible. And one of those things is the railing and this anodization. Anodizing is a dipped product, so you're dipping it into a material, into a liquid, and it electrically, electrically bonds to the aluminum, and it's kind of like a clear coat layer, so to speak, so it kind of looks like a clear coat. You really can't tell it even exists. All you see is super bright, shiny rails. It can still scratch up some, but really, that's really only a problem in like the handrail areas. Uh, but uh, but for the most part, it's extremely strong. It is very difficult to weld, however. Uh, and so 
this has taken us two years to figure out how to how to involve this and how to dive into this whole process. Uh, and we've been through a number of guys trying to do it, and they got frustrated because welding aluminum, if you weld aluminum, uh, and welding anodized, if you've ever picked up anodized, you'll realize, especially as a TIG welder, which is how you weld most of this out, is with TIG welding, you will learn to hate it because it is not an easy thing to weld. And so we spent a couple years really dialing in how to do this. We also logistically have to provide, we have to supply the stuff off of the East Coast. So we're buying a semi truckload at a time. It is not an easy thing to get and get a hold of, but we're going through all that effort, added effort to make sure that this is gonna last as long as possible. The majority of manufacturers are gonna use Schedule 40 aluminum pipe. Uh, that's fine, it's great, strong stuff. It, they make great railing. The difference is, is it's gonna be a flat looking material. So what happens is they use what's called scotch Bright. You can get scotch Bright pads if you ever buy uh, some cleaning materials that there's a, a, that Scotch Rite makes at any any grocery store. There's various different stuff that you have, but it's a it's kind of a coarse sandpaper, if you will, and uh, um, you will rub that. You wrap it around the rails, and you'll rub the rail until it really starts giving you a uniform finish. And there's different finish levels you can get with Scotch Brite, but that's where you're going to see most manufacturers have kind of a very consistent mill type finish to it that might have a moderate sheen or just a, a duller look to it that's gonna be extremely common. If they polish it and they actually put a polish and they rub the polish through there and they get this really shiny sheen out of it and you go enter into salt water, even if it's shark hide, wear and tear happens and it's going to oxidize. So the high polished finished layer is not gonna last a very long time. We used to polish all the boats. Honestly, it is a waste of man hours and a waste of time. And so this is something that's gonna last you a long time. This will last for years and years and years and you're not gonna have the fatigue, you're not gonna have the anodizing going and chalking out on you or looking dull and dingy, it's gonna look like stainless steel. It's gonna look like a very mirrored finish. The other factor that's really important with this, and this is just on the bow rails, uh, which is really cool by the way, all of the boats you're gonna see, they're welded into the windshield up here, it gives it really good sturdiness. And this is also pretty robust rail. This is not a one inch rail, this is an inch quarter rail. So you got a lot of strength just in this rail. You can strap stuff down. If you're up here, you can grab a hold of it, but it gives you great sturdiness for, for big water use. Uh, but uh, everything's welded to the deck. I can't stress enough, stay away from bolts. <laughs> stay away from hardware on your rails. The only other way to get a high sheen shine like this is go to stainless steel. It's beautiful, it looks great, but it, it is mechanically fastened to your deck. Uh, if you're using the boat in salt water particularly, that is a point for corrosion. Stay away from it. The welded point, you're not gonna have any issues on this. There's no dissimilar metals. This is aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. This is gonna last a very long time, but the biggest part is by mechanically fastening uh, your rails to the boat, this, as you're running through the ocean, is going to vibrate. So you can imagine over hundreds and hundreds of hours of use, your sealant down here is getting maximum vibration. Think about big bow rails on big offshore boats, same thing. If it's stainless steel mechanically fashioned, it's gonna sit there and vibrate. That vibration is going to loosen that seal on that edge and it's gonna start corroding with dissimilar metals because it's stainless steel to aluminum. And then that fastener is gonna loosen up. Now you're gonna have an intrusion point for water, you're gonna have leak and you're gonna have some corrosion around here. Manufacturers that use bolted on stainless steel rails know this, they know this is a problem. It's well documented, I'm not making anything up. Uh, you can probably Google it and find plenty of issues. Uh, the anodized gives you that bright finish level and it takes way more work to do it. It is a lot more difficult process. There's a lot more training involved. It's not for a beginning level fabricator. Uh, the guys in our shop that are welding the anodizer guys that have been with us for a ton of years. And uh, uh, they're the ones that are, that are entrusted with this, but they're also the guys that have the skill set and, and the time behind them to really excel in this. So that anodized really spruces it up and, and is, is really a big differentiator in these boats. Now on number three. All right, number three, plate thickness. Uh, right here, I'm gonna show up close to the camera. Uh, our boats come standard with good old quarter inch plate. You see it right there. This is the industry norm for what is considered to be strong and robust. That is 190. You see the difference between the two? It's pretty considerable. I'm hoping that camera picks it up pretty good, but that gives you a lot of strength. The rigidity and strength of a quarter inch bottom is what you're gonna find on every boat builder's 30 foot offshore. We're doing it a 21 footer. Why is that important to you? Are you gonna fatigue a 190 bottom? Honestly, probably not. I'm not trying to tell you, oh, your boat's gonna crack out and it's gonna fail on you. What I'm telling you is by using thicker, heavier plate material, we can do better weld out, add more structure and give you a much more sound, robust boat. You're gonna feel the boat is gonna be stouter. It's gonna be more pronounced, if you will. You're gonna feel it when you're running through swells. It's gonna be, uh, 
you're, you're gonna feel much more solid when it's running. But the other part is weight, it is heavier. Weight is a super important factor when it comes to ride quality. Uh, you gotta think of basic physics, uh, jump back into uh, high school physics class. Mass, the weight, and speed that you're accelerating at. The more speed you have and the more mass you have, the more kinetic energy you have. You are impacting into a buoyant force. The two things that are overcome the buoyant force of water is the V, so deflection, the V of your hull, uh, and also the weight of your material you're using on your boat. The weight of a 21 Delta is 3,500 pound dry weight. Uh, that's gonna be 700 pounds, almost more than any of the competitors. 700 pounds seems like a lot, and it is. it does make a big difference. Where guys will hammer us on is they'll say fuel economy, fuel economy, fuel economy. You're talking maybe a 0.1 to 0.2 mile per gallon change, but the ride quality is unmatched. Also, if you beat your boat all the time in rocks, this is gonna fatigue a lot less. You're gonna have way less worries about it. This thing is really the Sherman tank of boats. But jumping in, this is the side sheets. Common industry standard right here is 125. Uh, this 125 is uh, what we build seat boxes out of. This is 160. And see the difference of the plate thickness. That 160 aluminum, if you watch these videos, and, and I encourage you to watch a bunch more, uh, this 160 allows us to do a lot of really cool things. But this 160, not only is it uh, thicker, but and heavier, which is all good things. We just went over that. Uh, it is so much more stout. You bump into the dock, you hit things. It's gonna dent way less uh, easily. It's gonna be way more robust, but it allows us way more weld out, which is super important when it gets into our next reason, which is I think number four, uh, chine weld out. And so I'm gonna hop down here real fast and you have your extrusion up top and you have your extrusion down below on the chine. I'm actually gonna have Rosario drop in a little splice that you can see uh, an end cut, so you can see how I describe it. But basically that slight, that, that extrusion has a slot. Uh, kind of like this on the top edge of the extrusion, the side sheet drops inside of it. And as a manufacturer, you weld on the inside and it's got kind of an angle, kind of like your hand, so to speak. And so your side sheet drops in, your bottom sheet comes into the bottom and you weld right here on both sides to that extrusion. It's a solid piece of aluminum. It's super strong, super robust. That's all you need for strength. That is how every manufacturer does it. That's how we did it for a long time. But the downside is what you get mostly down on the bottom chine is you have the potential for crevice corrosion. So if you walk around the shows, if you're at trade shows, you look at other boats, you're gonna look at that chine line where the side sheet mates up and you're gonna see little tiny gaps that show themselves and disappear because the movement of the aluminum from weld out, you're gonna see that consistently all the way down the sides. And what happens is salt water gets in there and it has nowhere to go. So you have what's called uh, crevice corrosion, a potential for crevice, crevice, crevice corrosion. Is that gonna, corrode out your side sheet, no, just wash it out, keep it clean, but it will begin to oxidize the aluminum and start festering the aluminum because the aluminum is trying to protect itself. So it starts working its edge up. And if you do a lower whole side paint like this, it's gonna start lifting your paint on the side of the boat. We love this lower whole side paint, it looks beautiful. And uh, it keeps a very consistent look. Raw aluminum, we love it. Uh, I love the look of raw aluminum, but it's not for everybody. People want their boat to look as good as they can for a long period of time. And so the lower whole side paint uh, if done right, will hold up great. But that is one key factor is that outside welded joint. And that outside welded joint, is it stronger? Sure, are you ever gonna see the benefits of the strength? No, you're already building it beyond what it needs to be. But that really protects the painted layer of the boat and prevents any crevice corrosion. And that's needed. Uh, you need to do the 160 side sheets, we were just talking about that, to do this. If you do 125, it cannot handle the heat and I want to oil can really heavily on you. And that also gives us the benefit here, this welded logo, this is really unique and cool to us, uh, is this 160 side sheets allow for that and allows us to get uh, a lot more uh, weld work and it can handle that heat without causing any oil canning and any issues there. Now we're on to number five, welded through holes. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of mechanical uh, fittings on the side of the boats up top in, in most brands that are like a plastic through hole or a, maybe they got a chrome bezel over top of it or it's a stainless through hole. Typically not in aluminum though, you're gonna see plastic. Where we jump in is we're getting into a boat that's gonna be a welded through hole. So this hole right here you see on the side of the boat, uh, kind of inconspicuous, there's a big hole on the side of the boat. That is your, your through hole for all of your pumps. This is the hidden thing on the inside that you do not see otherwise. This pipe is what you're seeing well to the outside of the boat right here. This is sitting on the inside of the boat. High looped in is all of your pumps. So this boat on a 21 Delta has two bilge pumps. 
These are your inlets for the, the bilge pumps. This is your fish box pump. It has a diaphragm fish box pump. Uh, I don't dive into that whole lot, but that is far better than a macerator pump. It is a little bit slower, but it will be, it'll hold up way better. It's very robust. This gets welded in place at a slight angle. And so all the water is gonna be out, forced outward and down to the bottom. All three of these pumps can go full tilt and not overwhelm this whole system. But this entire manifold box is where all of your through holes are coming out of. Your hoses, again, they come in, they drop down, so it won't back feed back into the boat. It's called a high loop, and uh, that protects the drainage. This is something that I don't think you're gonna find in any other boat, uh, and uh, it's unique to Raider. Uh, we actually stole it off of uh, an idea from my business partner who owns Bayweld Boats. He's doing this on his own personal boats, and I had to rob the idea. We love it. We put it on every boat we build, and uh, it really prevents all those through holes being mechanically fastened on the outside of the boat. The other thing on the welded through holes is below the water line. This is above the water line. This is not as important to have, but it does protect your paint uh, by having a welded uh, through hole rather than mechanically fastened. This is a safety reason. When you drop into a through hole for typically your washdown pump, if you cruise the show, you're gonna find boats that have a plastic through hole out the back of the transom with a screen kind of in a dome on the outside mounted as low to the bottom of the hole as possible and it sticks out the back of the boat. That is your water intake for your water, raw water washdown. That has almost sunk my personal boat. And so I actually found a crack, I was taking on water and that whole through hole had, had fatigued on me and so we replaced it. Uh, I didn't sink the boat, but it was definitely a, a dangerous point and that really led me into really pushing this to happen sooner. And this is a welded through hole. We call this, well, I call this the rocket. Uh, this thing is Schedule 80 pipe, so it's a really heavy aluminum pipe. It's thread at the top. We thread in a shutoff valve that's stainless steel that allows you to shut it off. And so that closes the water flow from, uh, from your boat. So if you're gonna be out of town for any long period of time, you're mooring it at marina, uh, anytime you leave the boat at night, you really need to shut that valve off and close it. So if your hose was to fatigue, come off, something was to come disconnected, you fill in the blank, it's not gonna allow water just to freely flow into your boat. That's gonna stop it from coming in. And so that's gonna protect you in a marina sense for any through hole. Uh, the other thing is it comes down through here. So this plate on the outside is quarter inch thick. So just like that bottom we looked at, that's quarter inch thick plate. Uh, protruding through the bottom of that is a quarter inch of this pipe. Now that pipe is gonna set right into the hole we drill in the bottom of your boat from the inside. So the bottom of your boat, that's gonna set in and we're gonna weld this around the perimeter so that's welded the outside of your boat. Internally, we're gonna weld this around the perimeter of this plate. This is called a doubler plate. That's gonna span all of this pressure that could be applied. So uh, I've been in the boat industry long enough to see some of the most weirdest things happen that you would never expect to happen, which is why we overbuild this. Somehow, if there was some weight pressed against just a pipe welded to the bottom of the boat, it can crack it and it can actually cause some damage. And so this is what you're gonna see on a US Coast Guard certified inspected vessel. Uh, kind of a fancy term for a really, really big boat that is inspected by the engineers at the US Coast Guard if you wanna run passenger carrying over six people. Uh, so if you're building an 85 foot catamaran to carry around 70, 80 people on a ferry, uh, this is what you're gonna to have to have for every through hole. We're putting this in your 21 foot boat. Uh, you wanna talk about overbuilt and robust? That's what we do. Uh, we're gonna build you a boat that's gonna last you as long as possible and you're gonna be as tough as, as, as we can possibly build it. And this is, if this is not an example, I don't know what will be. Uh, but additionally, so this is welded down. You're welded around the perimeter here. You're welded on the bottom of the boat. You got the shutoff valve here. Then we come in. So this is your, your wash down pump intake. And this guy, this is called a scoop strain. This is a cast aluminum product by our friends over at Fraser Foundry and uh, Fraser Bronze. And uh, this is all aluminum. This gets welded to the bottom of your boat, just like so. What's cool about it, as you can see, it's a great, right? Uh, water is gonna flow in. So as you're running, pretend like it's welded on the bottom of the boat, and we are running that boat forward, that is forcing water into that gray and up into this through hole. So this is your wash down pump. So underway, under pressure, water's flowing into this at a higher rate. It's gonna give you a back charge in your wash down pump, turn it into a nice little pressure washer for the back deck while you're underway. And so if you're going point to point, if you're uh, trolling for albacore, and you're just trying to clean up while you're under, underway, a lot of times you're creating a pocket of air around your wash down intake, that then it stops working while you're underway. This is gonna force it to work. Also, if you have a bait tank and intake for your bait tank, we're gonna screw that into the top. That's gonna tee off to your wash down pump. And so your bait tank pump is gonna come through here. So you're always gonna have water supply while underway. You're never gonna starve that water system. Uh, this is an added thing that you only see on offshore boats. I don't know 
of another production manufacturer doing this, not on their offshore boats. Uh, but we're talking about a 21 foot pilot house. Just shows you, we take it to the next level. All right, we're on the back side of the boat now. And I, uh, sorry, got my list here. Uh, offshore bracket. I, uh, man, our offshore bracket's unique. Just take a look at it. If, if you're still at the boat, I uh, go around the back side of the boat and take a look at the offshore bracket. You're gonna see how wide it is. It is the full width of the boat. Uh, if you look here, right behind me, you can see we actually bring the bucket in a little bit and we weld it in set and then we taper that corner. That's gonna prevent a lot of spray. But you're gonna see that this offshore bracket is as wide as any manufacturer can make it. Uh, this really starts at the bow of the boat. Uh, that might kind of sound odd, but the bow of the boat is gonna give you forward buoyancy. When you create so much stern buoyancy, so this offshore bracket creates about 1,500 pounds of buoyancy. And when you've got uh, that much buoyancy on the stern, what it's gonna do is gonna lift your offshore bracket, lift the stern, it's gonna bury your bow. You gotta think of your boat on, a, on like a teeter-totter, so to speak, right, a fulcrum point, and it's gonna bury that bow because you have more buoyancy in the stern. So to counteract that, you either make the bracket narrower or you add more depth to the V of the bow. This is kind of a weird thing to be using as an instruction, but you add more depth to the bow, you carry it further forward. Maybe you add more shoulders in the front, so you carry the roundness of your bow further forward, giving you more forward lift. There's a, that's three ways that you can accommodate. You're gonna see a couple different offshore brackets. This is as wide as you're gonna see. Uh, you're gonna see it close to that where they're tucking trim tabs underway. That's still a good design. Uh, that does really well. They're hiding the trim tabs. It's gonna affect your whole, by what I found like our offshore brackets, you're gonna see that on our offshore series, sorry. Uh, and our offshore series has enough, it's narrow enough to where the trim tabs tuck underway. Uh, and I did that to change the perspective angle of the hole. And while you're running underway, that actually changed just that little bit I did, changed the running attitude of that boat by 10%. Uh, and I uh, doesn't sound like a big deal, but it really is. Uh, it gives you a more perch position from that hole, you're up a lot taller. And so it was a perspective that I wanted to introduce into the hole uh, and give it a little bit different running attitude just naturally. Uh, this offshore bracket, and we're talking about a 21 foot boat, is full width. Uh, so the other things you're gonna see as you narrow it up, you're gonna see that trim tab tucked away. We do it on the offshore bracket, on the offshore boat like we, I just mentioned. Uh, and uh, that's gonna be the widest you're gonna see really in the market that I'm aware of. Uh, the next you're gonna see a narrow one. So the narrowest you're gonna see is about 24 inches. You're gonna see a variance between 24 to 36 inches on single engine applications. They're gonna have to go a little bit wider for dual engine application, but single engine application you're gonna see on 21 foot boats, typically in that 24 inch range. That's gonna give you minimal buoyancy, but it's fresh water coming off the bottom. So not fresh water, but it's, it's clean water coming off the bottom of the hole to the props. So you got good propulsion uh, and not a bunch of noise down there, not a bunch of air uh, causing cavitation. Uh, then the other possibility that you're gonna see is called a cantilever bracket. And that's where the offshore, the, the transom here carries down to the whole plate all the way down, but then you have an elevated pod that is basically a tube, a rectangular or square tube that comes up at an angle. So the bottom of the boat is here. And if I can show it, your offshore bracket is gonna come up upward at an angle, cantilevering that weight. So now your outboard here, if this all makes sense, is gonna weigh the stern down and it's actually gonna pick your nose up in the front. And so they're called a cantilever bracket. You're cantilevering the weight of the outboard because it has no added buoyancy to the stern. Uh, that's gonna be an indication typically of a lower dead rise bow. And so bow entry that's gonna be flatter, less shoulders. So it doesn't have a whole lot of buoyancy in the front. Uh, and they're trying to really utilize the weight of the outboard to add that buoyancy. Really common on that offshore bracket design is gonna be weight ratings on outboards uh, saying, hey, you can only use an outboard that weighs 450 pounds or 650 pounds. This. Uh, it doesn't matter. We're rated, uh, I think, 250 on this. You can run a V6 250. Honestly, this 200 runs fantastic on this boat. Great fuel economy, great presentation, but uh, the 250 doesn't matter. We got the buoyancy, we got the flotation, the offshore bracket, everything will handle it, no problem. Uh, and uh, that's really what makes our offshore bracket really unique. But the size, the width, take a look at all that. Uh, the other thing that uh, is really pretty awesome is uh, the uh, swim ladder. I'm gonna have Rosario, I don't have it in front of me right here, but I'm gonna have Rosario do a, a close up of one of the swim ladders. It's a pocketed uh, inset uh, swim ladder that allows you to easily pull it out and put it in. This is a chambered offshore bracket. So everything is fully isolated. It's sealed. So it's, a, it's an airtight chamber on the offshore bracket. And that pocket is just inset in there. So your dive ladder is not sticking off the back corner of the boat in the way you're not stepping on it. It's actually inside the offshore bracket, hidden, easy to get to, easy to put back away. It's really cool. Okay, now we're on number seven, our, our uh, overhang on the back of these boats. This is a 20 inch overhang. Uh, this is the same as the Profish. So the Delta and the Profish are very similar. 
the Coastal and the Sea Raider are very similar with a lot of the, the various different features. So cabin design on the Pro Fish and the Delta are very, very similar. Uh, you got a 20 inch overhang. This gives you great weather to hide out of. So I go into it pretty good on the 21 Delta. I go into it all the boats, but this is super comfortable. You're out of the rain, out of the sun, you got good shade. Uh, it's really comfortable. You got a bulkhead here and you got a second station. A lot of times I find myself just sitting on the gunnel right here and this is gonna blockade me a lot from a lot of shade. Uh, we're in Eastern Washington, so we fish, you know, Lake Roosevelt, fishing on the Ponderé, fishing in really sunny places, but I'm also on the Pacific Ocean all the time. And so you get those days where there's no wind and that sun's beating down here. It's nice to have a little bit of overhang to kind of block that direct sunlight. Uh, or the next day it's raining. And so having something you can tuck out of is really nice. And so I like this. Also with these anodized rails on the back, you got great grab handles back here. So while you're running, while you're underway, if you're running, you know, a lot of times guys are gonna be facing forward. And so they're standing right here while you're running, they're bracing themselves, they got a good grab handle, but this is gonna blockade a lot of the spray coming off that, that roof. So we love this, this is an awesome feature. On to number eight. Eight brings on this thing that you just saw. This is the manifold system. Uh, these two inlets here, those are your bilge pumps. Number eight is dual bilge pumps. That's standard on a 21 foot boat. It's not a single bilge pump, it's dual bilge pumps. And these are your two outlets for them. And so that was number eight. That's unique for a 21 foot boat and just shows our commitment to redundancy, our commitment to quality, commit, commitment to just giving you a better boat uh, on number nine. Number nine are these transom doors. I, uh, You're gonna see a lot of manufacturers, well, so we used to too, to be frank, this used to be a, a, a plywood back deck or a back wall with vinyl over it. Uh, quick, easy, easy fitment. Well, it was actually pretty difficult fitment, but uh, you just set it in place, you screwed it in place, great. We've been trying to get away from that for a while and we did here a couple years ago. And so now this is a fully welded plate, but but this here, these are King Starboard material. This is a, uh, a high density plastic, very high quality product. And then it's fully gasket. So you've got actually a weather stripping around here. You have a uh, really high quality uh, Gym Lux latch right here. And then you have your hardware that, that screws it in. It's got a, a nylock on the backside that really locks it in place. You have silicone around the perimeter on the inside. Why this is important is majority of the manufacturers, if you walk around the shows, you're gonna see a metal aluminum frame around the perimeter that's welded together. It's TIG welded at the corners and it's brushed with aluminum. And the insert's gonna be either starboard or diamond plate or something of the sorts. And then that's physically screwed to the aluminum. Now you're gonna have direct stainless steel hardware to aluminum connection, which is gonna cause dissimilar metals and cause corrosion also. With that aluminum to aluminum here, uh, you're gonna have a crevice point, potential corrosion on that painted surface. So keep that in mind. This is just gonna give you a far better pro quality product that's gonna last a lot longer. Uh, and it looks really, really good. So we're really happy with this stuff and uh, it looks fantastic. All right, this is uh, number 10. This is the full meal deal. This is the, the pinnacle of coolness. Uh, that's kind of weird. But uh, this is our dual battery management system. Uh, we do this in all of our boats. Uh, we're shooting a bunch of these back to back. And so I feel super repetitive. Uh, so bear with me. This is like the third or fourth one we've done. Uh, but uh, the dual battery management system, way different than a battery switch. For all the boats that I've been around, talked to customers about, we've built, that I've built in my career, one of the main questions we get asked very commonly is, does it have dual batteries? Well, yes, it does. Does it have a battery switch? Yes, it does. The problem is, is if you're checking the box of the battery switch, you might as well run power to it on a lot of these applications. Because when you turn your battery on, everything communicates and everything is on. So your Garmin electronics is gonna drain your house start battery. You need an isolated system. That's where the management system comes into play is it's a dual bank management system. And so you have two banks that are isolated. You have your engine start bank and your house bank. Your house is gonna be your Garmin electronics, your house lights in the cabin, all that other fun jazz. Uh, your engine start bank is literally gonna be just your engine. That is going to start your engine. It's gonna supply the power to your engine. It's gonna recharge it. The engine's gonna charge back to it. So both of them are fully isolated. It has nothing to do with how many batteries. You can have four batteries in the system. You have three, two batteries in the system. You can have three, six, 18, whatever you can find room for, quite frankly but it's about two banks, a house bank and a single engine starting bank. If you have two engines on the back, two main engines, you're gonna have a three bank battery system. That's gonna be common on the bigger boats. Uh, but involved in the two bank that we have on this boat, to, to keep a charge on your house side, we have what's called an ACR system. It's automatic charging relay. It's made by Blue Seas. It's a fantastic product. It's going to sense the charge of available voltage on your house circuit. And so if you're at 12.1 volts, it's gonna say, great, you're awesome. You're standing right where you need to be. 
uh, if you are at 10.9 volts on your house side, it's gonna say, hey, we need some help over here. And it's gonna signal that, it's gonna divert the charge from your main engine alternator over to your house bank. And it's gonna charge your house bank back up above 12 volts, all the while maintaining and watching your, your engine start side. So if your engine start battery, your engine bank, is starting to wane down into a dangerous zone or it's starting to lose power, it's gonna stop the diversion of that, that power to your house side refill your, your engine start and then back to the diversion on your, your house side. All that keeps everything isolated, it isolates your battery systems and it gives you a redundant charge capabilities. Now, on top of that, if you did have a battery go bad on either side and you need that material to run, if you got a, in, a battery boil over for instance, you can remove that battery from the system. That doesn't mean you don't have power. That means you can go to combine mode and you flip it from on to what's called emergency. The yellow, yellow band at the bottom, it says emergency. Uh, you can honestly run the boat at that all the time, but then you're not isolating the banks. Everything's communicating, everything's talking, everything's charging collectively. You're kind of circumventing your ACR, uh, but you're getting a battery system that's fully communicative all the way across the board, and, and uh, that's more of a safety redundancy factor. The other part is all the breakers in here, is uh, getting away from spade fuses and getting away from glass fuses as much as we can. We encourage dealers to, to mount the downriggers off of a 30 amp breaker versus a glass fuse. Uh, it's a resettable breaker system. If you're running electric reels offshore and deep, deep drop fisheries and stuff, uh, it's just easy to reset that breaker versus dealing with a glass fuse that corrodes or a spade fuse that corrodes over time. And so that breaker system is not only for your main, your battery, or your bilge pumps and your trim tabs, but then you get a lot of extra slots to add other stuff, pot pullers and downriggers and whatever. And so it's a full immersive management system that really is not seen on a 21 foot boat. It's not an, an on and off switch. It's not a one, two, all off. This is a very high quality system. That gives you the 10 things that really make this 21 Delta unique. I hope you get the chance to look at this boat and really see what it is well beyond the basics of just a 21 foot boat. These are 10 unique things that is not gonna be, you might see one or two of these items on other boats, but really and truly these are all things that are super unique to this boat that really elevated above the class of, of others. And so give it a good hard look. Thank you so much for taking the time. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like and subscribe button. If you QR code it from the boat show, if you got questions, just ask us. If you're on the website and uh, you want more info, uh, slam that info button and, and send us your, uh, your information. We'll have somebody reach out to you. And uh, thank you so much for taking all your time and spending it with us today. Uh, this has been the 21 Delta. I'm John Lawrence with Raider Boats. I'll see you on the water. Yeah.